yesterday for Clemson. A big bottom of the fourth, second home run of the season for Marissa Gumbardo, followed up by a triple by Loga Leo. JoJo Hyatt with a butt single tax on to the action as Clemson comes from behind a win 5-1 over Maryland and look to keep the momentum rolling today. It's a pitcher perfect Saturday afternoon in Clemson, South Carolina, where today it's the second day of the ACC Big Ten Softball Challenge. And we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Graham Doty, Scott Whitlock, happy to be with you. And Scott, this is a Clemson team coming off a 5 1 victory over Maryland yesterday, came from behind to win, and they look to build off that today. Yep, I thought they played better and better each inning yesterday. And momentum and learning and growing is, is just so paramount for Clemson. I know this is going to be another great day for them to take a step forward. And they take on Maryland for the second time already in this tournament. And, Scott, this is a Maryland team searching for their first win in the tournament. They are. They've uh, lost three in a row, but I'm sure that Coach Montgomery wants to do something about that. So this ought to be a lot of fun. So Clemson will be the visitors as Maryland will be the home team for this contest as today's starting pitcher for Maryland. And, Scott, they will rely on her. Clemson faced her yesterday. It is another freshman. It is Trinity Schottelbeck, and she takes the circle today for Maryland, and the Terrapins will rely on her Yep, the and second she, time around. Her job is going to be to kind of hold down this offense of Clemson's and not let them, you know, break out early. As you see, each head coach, there's John Rittman in his first season as the head coach for Clemson in the lineup today, one through nine for the Tigers. Hannah Goodwin in that sixth spot had three hits yesterday, all singles for Clemson. And she uh, she leads a, a uh, batting order that is really looking to gain a rhythm. They've, uh, they've had some innings where they've just uh, been very, very difficult for them to get Anything going in the batter's box, but then yesterday afternoon in the late innings, we saw them explode. And this is a lineup that will be squaring off against the freshman Trinity Schlottelbeck, as you see, first year head coach for Maryland coming from Louisiana Tech. It's Mark Montgomery, fifth head coach in program history at Maryland. Spent seven seasons as the head coach at Louisiana Tech last year. Louisiana Tech won the Conference USA regular season and the Conference USA tournaments he is a very good coach he's well seasoned has a history of success everywhere he goes he's trying to get this maryland program with a new culture about it they were hired late into fall and uh, good things are ahead for maryland yeah you mentioned he was hired late in the fall all new coaching staff for maryland as coach montgomery tries to build his culture for the terrapins absolutely and everything over in the first base dugout is about establishing a culture, establishing a tradition, establishing a way of going about the business. And the Tigers of Clemson have done a great job of that so far. What will this be like today for Maryland? They just played a game, wrapped up about half an hour ago, didn't go their way. What's this like when a team has to respond and you're playing a different team? Yeah, the, this for them is all about learning and trying to find a way to win. I mean, just find a way to win. They uh, have a, uh, a great battle ahead of them because their schedule is only going to get tougher and tougher, and now they're uh, sitting there with only one win on the season, and I'm, I'm sure that Coach Montgomery is wanting to right this ship and get them moving up. There's today's starting pitcher, the freshman from Williamsport, Maryland, Trinity Schlottelbeck. She did pitch in the game yesterday against Clemson where she went an inning and two-thirds in relief, surrendered four hits, one run. It was earned. She had one strikeout and one walk. She threw 40 pitches against the Tigers yesterday. Yes, she did. And uh, the, the uh, Tigers got to every pitcher that Maryland put out there in front of them uh, yesterday. And uh, hopefully they can do that again if you're a Clemson fan. And if you're a Terrapin fan, what you want to see is some consistency in the circle. So Maryland in their gray uniforms are going to be the home team in a packed house. It is an, a pitcher-perfect Saturday afternoon in Clemson in a busy weekend at Clemson. Baseball, 
located right next to the softball stadium. They have a game going on right now. Men's basketball in action later today at Clemson track and field. Yeah. Good time to be in Clemson this year. Yeah, weekend. if you're inside the city limits, chances are you're, you're among some type of athletic event today in this town. What a great setting, though, and it's a beautiful day. So Cami Pereira will be leading off for Clemson to kick things off in the top of the first. Maryland took on Pittsburgh this morning, lost 8-5 to five in a game that lasted three hours to kick off the second day of the tournament. So Clemson, they're one of five teams hosting the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Five ACC teams. The other one is a tournament in Clearwater, Florida that Florida State is participating in. First pitch, we're underway. Strike one to Cami Pereira. Junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. You asked for time to get out of there. I know that Coach Rittman is really looking for somebody to really take hold of the, the leadoff spot in this lineup. And uh, so it's going to be interesting as the first third of the season unfolds to, to see who really steps in there and says, okay, I'm going to do this for you. Tad bit upstairs, one and one. Our home plate umpire today, Phil, uh, Phil Reels. Ricky Sexton is at first base and Rodney Graves. Arbitrator at third. Arbitrator, I like that. Got to mix it up. That's high. Two and one. I got to step up my game. <laughs> Weather-wise, going to be tough to beat this one. A little bit chilly, maybe, but right now 45 degrees around first pitch. Not very many clouds in the skies. This ball is cranked in the air towards right center field, and the right fielder brings it in for out number one. So Pereira is retired to begin the top of the first. That's Brashear out there with a the catch. Yeah. Pereira got under it a little bit, and it hung up in the air in the wind and gave uh, the right fielder plenty of time to get over there and snag that. And Brashear was happy to do it. Here's Grace Matamore, the junior from Ashburn, Virginia. This is a Clemson team yesterday against Maryland. Got off to a little bit of a slow start. No runs the first three innings, but really found their groove in that fourth inning when yep. they scored the three runs. The fourth inning home run uh, really opened up the door for Clemson, and it, uh, it just changed the momentum completely in the game. Maryland controlled the early, the early third of this ball game, of the ball game yesterday, I should say. And uh, I know that's something that Coach Rittman wants to do is get out early. 1-1 one, one the count on Madam Moore. Transfer from Army, went 0 for 1 yesterday. But she did get on base, had three walks and scored a run. Yeah, and I did ask the question yesterday, and I have confirmed. She is not AWOL. She actually transferred into Clemson, so she didn't just run away from West Point. One, two count. It's in the dirt, two and two. You would hope she wouldn't be able Well, yeah, no, you don't want that. I mean, no, that would not be a good thing to have the MP show up in the middle of a softball game. But, uh, <laughs> but I know that Coach Rittman is glad that she's here. Flips it fouled on the right field line, two and two. It's just a beautiful setting today. Uh, we've got a crowd, Graham. I mean, it, this is a, a uh, well over a thousand people here. There's three, 300 or so out there on the bank beyond left field. I mean, it, people are excited about softball being in this town. They should be off to a good start this season. That's a borderline pitch and misses full counts. That was a close one for sure. Clemson four and four coming into today's game and I believe if you had if you had asked John Rittman back in the fall if he would have taken four and four he probably would have there's a base hit by Matamore squeezed it through that six hole and Clemson has a one out single yeah. it doesn't do too much with the ball just puts the bat on it and drives it through the five six hole and the Tigers have a base runner if you look right here just a 
a ground ball that just kind of found a way to get between the infielders. And now they've got a runner on first base with an out. Let's bring up a dangerous hitter and the freshman, Valerie Cagle. And she's a little bit of a Swiss Army knife for this ball club. She, she really is. She, she's a pitcher, she's an outfielder, and she is one of their better hitters. And she's just uh, going to have an outstanding career if she stays healthy. From Yorktown, Virginia, leads Clemson with two home runs this season. And she uh, hits the ball opposite way very well. What do you think? is the key to make a good two-way player. Because we've seen what she's done this season already in the circle, but she's been effective as well. Well, the they've got to have the athleticism, you know, first and foremost. And then secondly, they got to have the mindset to, to handle it. She has to be able to go out in the outfield and turn off the pitching switch. And then she has to be able to go into the circle and turn it on. And uh, there's, in today's game, there's not many that do that. Uh, but uh, she certainly is one that can. Foul back into the net, one and two. We saw a lot of pit, a lot of at bats yesterday go three and two, two and two, balls being fouled off, and uh, you know that's one of the secrets to scoring runs is making the making the pitcher run up her pitch count. Swing and a miss. First strikeout this afternoon for Schlotterbeck. Two down. And you see that ball was down in the zone. He was able to convince the hitter to chase it. Two outs and a runner on first. MK Bonamy digs in. Bonamy, a senior on this roster out of Hoover, Alabama. That's Birmingham. They can say Hoover all they want to, but that's <laughs> Birmingham. Although the people in Hoover would not like that. Ground ball left side. Play over at first. It's close and it's not in time as Bonamy is able to beat the throw by Regan Kerr. Yeah, Bonamy ru runs out of infield single. There was nothing that the there was nothing that the uh, shortstop Kerr could do. The ball hit deep in the hole, and it was really close. But the call went the Tigers' way, and you see she was safe. That's what, they, that's what speed does. So pitcher catcher after that play, what was that conversation? Just ran out the there and right? reminded her that there's two outs, make good pitches. That ball wasn't hit particularly hard. Give me a good pitch and we'll get you in the dugout. So two outs, two on. Marissa Gambarda takes the first pitch outside, ball one. A look at what she did yesterday, launched her second homer of the season. And that is what really kicked off that big bottom of the fourth for Clemson. And that was a two iron out of this park. It was no doubt about it. Too far inside, 2-0. Oh. Of course, most kids that play golf, they don't even know what a two iron is. They, <laughs> you know, they got the hybrids and all those things now. So, but she just drove that ball right out of the park yesterday. Good hitters count here. And she drives this one up straight away center field. Klein watches it sail over the wall. <laughs> a three run moon shot. Third of the season by Marissa Gumbarda. 3-0 Clemson strikes in the first. Well, you got to give it to, to our producer, Sandra Sullivan. He queued up the home run that was driven out of here yesterday. And you see right here again, this is another ball that's just driven out like a rocket. And right out of here. And that's brought uh, Coach Montgomery out to the uh, mound. And uh, he's trying to calm his pitcher down. I mean, if you think about it, you know, she had two outs and then she had a kind of a soft single to extend the inning. And then up yeah. here, then up comes, you know, and then bang, just like that, three runs are on the board. 
Morgan Bart, a third home run this season, leads Clemson. That's home run number 26 in her career for the Furman transfer. Bottom line, she hits a lot of home runs. And there was no doubt about it off the bat. So there you see Mark Montgomery out in the circle. What's he going over in this spot? Well, what he's doing right now in his head, he's just thinking, man, we got to get something going. I mean, we just have haven't had any kind of breaks or anything going our way this weekend. Of course, the opposition's had a lot to do with that. But he's just, you know, again, he's not in the exact same shape as Coach Rittman is at Clemson, but he is trying to establish a, a, a new regime there in uh, Maryland, and you don't want to have your kids get too despondent too early in the season. So I'm sure he's, he's searching for answers right now. And a good one at the plate with a 1-0 count, but you are right, two coaches in similar situations first season but the big difference of course Clemson first year having a softball program and but there's a little bit of an advantage because coach Ribbon at least every player in the dugout is someone that he recruited he didn't inherit them he brought them here they've been under his culture their entire uh, time that Clemson's had a program so in a way I think that he has an advantage over coach Montgomery and that coach Montgomery is literally having to meet players and get to know players that were recruited by somebody else. And some of these players for Clemson, even though this is the first year, they were on campus yes. last year in Redshirt. Yep. Yep. And, that's a, and that's a big lift. So we'll just see how this, you know, this season is going to be a, a very uh, at times up and down journey for the Tigers because of their, you know, being a first time program and playing in a, a very fine ACC conference. Uh, but uh, they, he's got to feel good because I can tell you walking around the ballpark and walking around the dugout and this, that, and the other, they've got a culture established, and uh, the winds will take care of themselves in time. we just got to remind ourselves sometimes as fans that we've got to give them uh, an opportunity to, to grow and improve as players. Right. This is a Clemson team picked preseason 10th in the ACC, their first year of existence. Florida State picked to win. That's no surprise, is They've it? They won the conference <laughs> six years in a row. They won the national championship a couple of years yeah. ago. They got off to a slow start in their tournament in Clearwater, Florida. They have lost to Washington. They lost to Minnesota yesterday. Well, Washington is one of the top five teams in the country probably. Uh, it's too early to rank them, one, two, three, four. And uh, Minnesota has really turned things around up they really there. They're, they, they're playing a good brand of softball. Hosted last year, regionals. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes to Hannon Goodwin. Rolls it to third where it's gobbled up by Kufta. Played at first is in time for the third and final out. Strong start for Clemson. Three runs on three hits, highlighted by the three-run bomb off the bat of Marissa Gambarda. Her third of the season puts Clemson in front. Three to zero as we head to the bottom of the first. Last time Logan Camel was in the circle, Scott. No hitter, first in program history, 11 strikeouts. That was on Wednesday against Western Carolina. It's kind of uh, frustrating, I was supposed for her, because now all she can do is mess up. Because when you start out in your first game at home with yeah. a no hitter, I mean, there's nowhere else to go. See the scouting report on Camel for the freshman. Will top out around the mid 60s. Has a very good changeup out of Buford, Georgia. Really good high school program at Buford. Yes, it is. And uh, she knows how to pitch. She's been on campus here for two years. She's one of those athletes that were here a year prior early. And, uh, and she really can spin the ball. Facing the leadoff batter, Regan Kerr. First pitch high. Kerr's hitting 294 on the season, uh, but she has a 400 on base percentage. And I've always thought that with the leadoff hitter, on base percentage is, is the stat to look at. Are you getting on base? Well, coming into this weekend, this is a Maryland team, Scott, and they're really just trying to find their way oh, offensively. Man. Yeah. Batting just 174. They yeah. only average four hits and two runs a game. Well, they last week they opened up in a very, very, very difficult tournament out in Texas. And, uh, you know, they played a, a 
couple of very, very good teams there. They did win their final game out there uh, last weekend, but uh, has not really had a lot of luck in South Carolina this weekend. That one win was against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. That was a 3-1 victory. That's foul back 2-2. Two and two. And it was, uh, uh, I know it had to feel good to finish the week with a win last yeah. last weekend, but uh, I don't know that they, you know, of course nobody anticipates just having so many close losses as he's had to start the season. But, but Coach Montgomery is a veteran, and if anybody's going to find a way, he will. I, I've noticed something very, very early right now that Camel is uh, – is a, a little while to start the start the game. I, I think that maybe I don't know if it's the cold weather, if the ball's too slick, or or nerves are involved. But uh, she's uh, not finding her spots as easily as she did a few days ago. Three two hit in the air, brought in by the shortstop, and a good one. So she responds, Scott, to record the easy line out. Made a big pitch when she needed it and induced a soft liner to short. So you bring up the weather. Temperature around 45 degrees as you see the lineup one through nine today. Uh, Maryland so far this season led by a number three hitter, Anna Cuffton. She leads the team with a 316 average. But how much of an impact, if any, can cold weather have on a pitcher? Well, it has, it, it's, it, it's really pitcher to pitcher and it has a lot to do with how they approach the game mentally. Uh, but, but sometimes when it's cold, uh, you, you know, you start the game off with brand new softballs and the ball sometimes are a little slick. And if you match that with a, a hand that might be cold and funny things can happen. Uh, but as the game un, unfolds and uh, the balls get scuffed in and the pitcher's adrenaline lowers and she goes back to just being herself, uh, it all kind of calms down. It is not a cold day today, uh, but it is chilly. Swing and a miss, one and two. That was a nice pitch. That's the best pitch she's thrown so far today. Uh, that ball had some bite on it and was nice and firm and tight. And the hitter just swung right through it. I would throw that one again. Upstairs, two and two. The one thing that you can do to get a pitcher in a good rhythm is if she's struggling a little bit, when you find a pitch she's throwing for a strike, live with it. Live with it, you know, and let her get that confidence under her. But she's right now in and out, in and out, up and down. And, and, I, and I know that Coach Jameson, uh, the very fine pitching coach for the Tigers, is uh, just trying to find that happy place for her right now. How long does that normally take to figure out what's, what's on and what is not quite as sharp Oh the gosh, the you know that it, it, you know with some pitchers it can be one at bat, <laughs> some pitchers it can be a season, <laughs> so you don't really know. But uh, Camel's going to be fine. She's going to be just fine. I mean, got a three-two count here against Klein. Payoff pitch, cold strike three, her it, first strike out of the day. You know, that's two times in a row when she's needed it to make a great pitch with a full count. She's done it that time with the uh, with the pitch on the outside corner. The hitter knew it. She just walked off, kind of tipped her hat, did the climb. That brings Kafka up. She's one of the few seniors in the lineup. Out of Huntington Beach, California. She jumps on the first pitch and sends one to right field for a two-out single. Well, well, now we can get that no-hitter stuff out of the way. Now she can just go about pitching. Uh, so uh, she, you know, she just uh, she left a pitch out over the, the plate and a veteran hitter just took it the opposite field and laid it in there for a single. Maryland, they were able to play five runs against Pitt this morning. They put up nine hits yeah, they, the most they've had in a game this season. Well, again, I don't want anybody to lose track of the fact. They're, they have a, a excellent coaching staff in the uh, in the third base dugout over there that does Maryland. Of course, um, we've talked about Coach Montgomery, but he's, they've got the former head coach at Arkansas on staff over there, Mike Larrabee. 
there is an outstanding staff over there. I think in time, it will get there for Maryland, but uh, it's going to it's going to be a process for them, just like we've been talking about for the Tigers. Now let me ask you this: weather. How important is that the first couple of weeks for a team like Maryland that really didn't get to practice outside a lot? Well, that's you know that's a factor. That's something that people uh, have to account for. You know, I uh, I'm sure they spend a lot of time indoors, but uh, I can promise you there's not one player or one coach uh, in this ballpark today that's going to use weather as a reason for anything. Maryland's looking for their first win this weekend. Yeah. One and six coming into today's game. Two and two, the counts on Liguri. Taylor Liguri, a freshman from Columbia, Maryland. Both of her parents attended the University of Maryland. So I guess she really didn't have much of a choice, probably, if uh, if. Mer if Maryland uh, wanted, I guess that's where she was going to go. Again, we're three and two. That's what we've been doing so far this inning, except for the uh, the single by Kufta. Three, two, high in the air, playable in left field. Underneath it and making the catch is Logaleo for the third and final out. So Maryland picks up a two out single, but they leave Anna Kupta stranded on first, 3-0 lead, Clemson after one. Top of the second on a sunny but chilly Saturday afternoon in Clemson, 3-0 lead for the Tigers over Maryland. A lot at, of people at the ballpark. Man, that's yeah. unbelievable. It, what a great scene. The, the grandstands are practically full. Full. The knoll out beyond the left field fence is, is crowded with people. They're out here enjoying it. And uh, it's just exciting to be a part of this. I'm, I'm glad that we're here, Graham. Likewise, off to a good start today for the Tigers. Up by three, and they will have seven, eight, nine stepping up to the plate to begin the second. Logaleo. Takes the first pitch, then misses. This right here is going to be a, a, an important inning for uh, Schlatterbeck to see if uh, she can settle down and kind of, you know, stop the stop the damage. Uh, I'm sure that the, the Maryland Ball Club is just looking for some pitcher to come out there and be able to give them four, five, six innings. They've just not not been able to get that yet. Yeah, you are right. Just going back to yesterday, Maryland used three different pitchers against Clemson, and then this morning against Pitt, they also used three. Yeah. Sharp ground ball to short. Kerr has it, slings it over in time to retire Logaleo to begin the second. Yep. Uh, hit sharply, but uh, right at the infielder. And Logaleo will take a seat. This brings up Bailey Taylor. She's trying to get some things going. She's just two for 12 on the young season, hitting 167. What you have to remember, we're very early in the year, so the batting averages are really misleading. Uh, unless you're hitting 800. Now, if you're hitting 800, you're going to say that's yeah. important. <laughs> but. Uh, when do you really start to look at the numbers? I, I like to have a month. Uh, a month? A month to five weeks in the season to really get a good feel for, you know, what kind of year somebody's, you know, possibly having. It's just early, and you've got to be patient with it. And that's a, that's a real challenge in today's world. Taylor yesterday went 0 for 3 against Maryland. It's low, 2 and 1. Started her career at Troy, where she played in 20 games for the Trojans. She's from South Carolina. She's not getting to play in her home state. Wanted to come home. And I imagine as a little girl, she was just wishing and wishing Clemson had softball. Now she gets her whiz. And now she's got it. That's exactly right. Three and one the counts. 
Taylor, she's from Winsboro, South Carolina, about two hours, 15 minutes from Clemson. Outside ball four. That's the first walk issued this afternoon by Trinity Schlotterbeck, and Clemson gets a one-out base runner. And you'll see she really wasn't close. Uh, the catcher tried to frame it back in, but it was almost uh, in the left side batter's box. And if you're if you're Schlotterbeck, that is just not what you, that's just not what you want right there. You don't want to walk. You had a good first at bat. You got the first out. You don't want to start just walking and setting the table for Clemson. Activity in the bullpen already for Maryland. And what you just touched on, not really a surprise since they've used so many different pitchers this weekend. Yes. Yeah, it, it is not a not a surprise. This is JoJo Hyatt, the freshman out of Buford, Georgia, at the plate. That's Kiana Carr, the senior from Phoenix, that was warming up in the pen for Maryland. Yeah. Outside, one and one. So Hyatt played at Buford High School where she won a 5A state championship. She's one of three Buford uh, players on the Clemson roster. Line drive, base hit to right field. And Clemson in business here with two runners on base and only one out to work with here in the second. Very, very nice job of hitting. You'll see right here, she doesn't try to overdo it. She just takes it where it's pitched and lifts it and flips it out there in the right field. And now the Tigers have a running and runner in scoring position. Totally different start than when these two teams played yesterday. Maryland scored first, and then it took Clemson until the fourth inning to pick up their first run. The biggest difference is yesterday when Maryland scored first, they scored one. Uh, the three-run homer in the first for this game that's just a completely different tone. Top of the order, Cami Pereira takes a first pitch on the edge, called a strike. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, giving up the one run in the first inning yesterday was a great example of damage control because uh, the, the Tigers found themselves in a mess early on in that game and uh, were able to get out of it with only one run. The uh, double, big double play was, I think, was right in the middle of all that. Upstairs to make it one and one. So what's that say about this Clemson team they're in growing. this first season? They're growing. Yeah. They're Early learning. too. They're learning. And they're making, you know, they're taking steps forward. Uh, I think that uh, that is a tribute to uh, the patience of the coaching staff. Uh, what you, what the, the fans here in this town is going to learn is that John Rittman is a very, very uh, patient, individual uh, he's an excellent teacher he's but he's he's just laid back he's just you know I've known John for a long time and he, he is a, a generally a laid back individual head coach at Stanford for 18 years now and all he did was win yeah he won a lot yeah, all he did was win two World Series five super regionals went to the NCAA tournament 16 years in a row yeah yeah High for ball too. So Cami Pereira on the driver's seat here with a 2-1 count. Yep. She's definitely got a hitter's count right here. You could play a little hit and run here if you wanted to, although I don't think they will this far down in the order. Hit in the air, left side. This could be troubling. It falls in for a base hit, and Clemson has the bases loaded. Long run for the shortstop, Regan Kerr. And it just and it, sailed over her head. It just landed out there in that little Bermuda Triangle that exists between the uh, left fielder, the shortstop, and the third baseman. It was not hit hard, but it was hit in the right spot. And now bases are loaded, and Maryland is facing a mess. So if you're the freshman, Trinity Slottlebeck, what's your game plan here? Just settle down and hit my spots. And on the flip side of that, if you're Grace Matamore, uh, you, what you're looking for is just something on, maybe even on this first pitch, just to jump all over. She's up here in an, in an RBI situation. Good job of laying off that pitch yeah. on the outside corner. 
So Clemson really trying to strike early. Put up a three spot in the first. Had the bases loaded. Infield playing about halfway in for the Terrapins. They know they can't afford to get too much farther behind in this ball game. But that actually helps the offense a little bit too if uh, Matamore is able to find one that she likes and hit it hard. Too far outside, two and one. Yeah. She has not been able to establish that pitch on the outside part of the plate. And that is, uh, I think that's maybe frustrating her a little bit. She's giving a long stare in there yeah. right now. She's not happy with anything they're asking for. You know, you ask a, you ask a pitcher or a coach or a catcher, what's the favorite pitch? You know, it's strike. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, she doesn't seem to feel as if she's, you can just see her face and her, her movements out there. She is not a comfortable person. And you see right now, you see those pitches are just off. And the catcher, if you'll notice, she's tweaking that ball with her wrist, bringing it back in. And the ball is actually further out of the strike zone than it appears. Here comes the 3-1. Full count. Catchers can help a, help a pitcher get a strike. But if you're missing on pitches, you know, umpires are human. You're going to have to show them you can hit the spot before you're going to get the call. And if you're, you know, struggling a little bit out there, they're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Bail pitch to Matamore. Low for ball four. Another run across the plate for Clemson. Yep. And now this game could really get away from Maryland if they're not careful. I'll be interested in seeing how much longer Coach Montgomery goes with Slaughterbeck. Scott, how good of an approach for Matamore so far? She has eight walks already this season, leads Clemson. She had three yesterday alone. Yeah, and it's uh, it just shows you that's a disciplined hitter that doesn't doesn't help the pitching. We got a pinch runner coming in the game right now. Looks like. Oda is going to run for Matamore. With one out and the base is loaded in the top of the second for Clemson. I think that means that Coach John Rittman and his staff feel like it's time now. And now it looks like we're going to have it. Let's see, are we going to have a change on Maryland's part or are they just getting the change that Rittman just made? Yeah, change. No, they just get the change. Yeah. Okay. No, no change in the circle just yet for Maryland. So Mark Montgomery sticking with this freshman for the time being. Yeah, but I, I got a feeling her time is is dwindling right now. So big spots oh. from the number three hitter, Valerie Cagle. Cagle and Bonamy both are going to have chances to, to break this game wide open. Cagle struck out last inning. She had one hit against Maryland yesterday. Takes a strike. Good swing, fouled back, strike two. Right now, she's a little late on the pitch, is the hitter Cagle. Sometimes tall players can let their swings get overly long and kind of drags through the zone. High one and two. So how do they fix it? Well, you just got to just work on and just go back to what you've been, been taught. Stay inside the ball. Stay nice and quick. We've got time called here. See what we got. Looks like up. Oh, somebody's dropped a pom pom out there at the left field foul pole. Can't have that. There we go. Now we're back to going now. Left fielder Jojo McCray had to run over to pick it up and hit him back to the young Clemson fan. Made a fan with that young lady. Now she's the young lady's hanging her head. She's embarrassed. 
That's in the dirt, two and two. And the Clemson hitters have done a great job of extending at bats. They've made Slaughterbeck throw a lot of pitches in only an inning and a third. Two, two, ground ball up the middle, deflected by Slaughterbeck. A run across the plate for Clemson. No play for the shortstop, Regan Kerr. The Tigers now have a 5-0 lead. When it's going your way, it's going your way. Slaughterbeck deflects this ball. It might have been a double play ball even, but as it turns out, it ends up being an infield single and another run. Smart play by Kerr. Just don't throw it, just eat it. Yeah, no choice. Just Live another day. Put it in your pocket. So Craigle will get credited with an RBI infield single. Absolutely. So five runs on five hits yeah. for the Tigers. First pitch strike to the new yeah. batter. See, 15 years from now, Craigle will be able to tell them about the ball she ripped up the middle to score a run. <laughs> you know. There'll be a lot of that with this team. First career home run, oh, yeah. first career triple. Bonamy's at the plate, one for one. Hot shot up there the middle, is. that's through. This will drive in, one run. It's bobbled by Klein in center field, so two runs across the plate for Clemson yeah. as Cagle goes from first to third on the play. Yeah, right there, she didn't, she didn't hesitate. She just jumped all over it and drove it right back up the middle. That should go as a single, two RBIs, and maybe an error on the center fielder allowing the base runner to reach third base. I think it was the bobble by the center fielder that allowed Cagle to get all the way over to third. And now we will see a pitching change. So Mark Montgomery will indeed make a change. He stuck with his freshman Pitcher Trinity Slaughterbeck with the bases loaded and Clemson does some damage scoring four runs on four hits. We'll step aside and when we come back, we'll take a look at the new pitcher for Maryland. New pitcher for Maryland, it's the senior Kiana Carr out of Phoenix, Arizona. Did not pitch against Clemson yesterday, but she did pitch earlier this morning against Pitt and she went three and a third and had Four strikeouts and only one walk against Pitt, but did surrender three runs. So she inherits a very tough spot here with one out and runners on third and first and a very dangerous batter coming up to the plate in Marissa Gambarda. And this is all she's done so far. Launched another home run, a three-run moonshot in the first. At that point, made it a 3-0 lead for Clemson. It was just no doubt about it, driven right out of the park. Runner breaks for second, and the throw goes on a shallow right center field, and another run will score as Cagle trots in from third. And inning up all the way on third on the play is Bonamy. It'll go as a stolen base because the runner did break. It'll be only a, a decision of who they assigned the error to for the runner to advance to third base. There you see the stolen base. It looked like the ball was up a little bit, but it looked like it was catchable. They give the error on the catcher, Volgaris. It was it was up, so I could see that. But not the start new pitcher for Maryland wanted. No. And on a car. the one thing for Carr, you, you got to realize she's only pitched uh, – in a, about four and a third innings, I think, somewhere around in there, but she's given up 11 hits. So people have been getting to her uh, in one form or fashion. So you certainly don't want to start allowing runs to, to come across the plate, you know, with stolen bases and wild throws and, and things of that nature. Yeah, 11 hits, a lot of extra base hits, three doubles and three home runs. Ugh. That was a good looking off speed pitch that just missed outside. It's it was. And there's still only one out in the inning. Seems like that the Tigers have been hitting since breakfast, but. Uh, <laughs> they, it does. But, Eight uh, runs on seven hits. In the second inning. A uh, little bit different from yesterday's game between these two teams. Yeah, but again, the, uh, the depth of. Uh, the pitching staff of Clemson 
is showing itself by allowing, you know, with uh, with them getting getting complete games, you know, out of Kegel yesterday, getting a complete game on Wednesday against, you know, today's starter, Kamel, uh, you know, you've got a, a rested staff. Yeah, how big of a benefit it is that, especially early in the season. Oh, it's always a benefit. This ball is hammered but foul. Oh, boy, they are, they are really teeing off on it. And now the race is on, you see yeah. about a dozen kids chasing a foul ball. That ball almost crossed the road. Yeah. Look at this. Look, the, here's fence the, kept, the fence kept it in. The, the wrought iron fence kept it in play. Three, two, low ball four, staying put on third is Bonamy. Ponder coming home, but the catcher will Garris on top of it. Yeah, you see, it's clearly a ball. Yeah, if it hadn't hit the umpire, there might have been a run scored for the Tigers. So Clemson still only one out to work with, with Bonamy on third and the board up at first, and the new batter, Hannah Goodwin, steps in. She's the ninth batter in this inning. A lot of times in a first and third situation, you, you might try to steal second base, but up eight runs, I doubt that Coach Rittman's thinking about it. I don't know, but uh, usually protocol and good manners once you, you uh, get a, a big lead, you don't, uh, you don't run on your opponents. And I, matter of fact, I just saw Coach Rittman tell, her ba tell his base runner at first base that. Here's I don't know if uh, our crew has a shot of that in between those, that pitch. Uh, I saw Rittman directly look at the, the runner at first base and he kind of gave a, a wipe of the hands, meaning you know, don't run you know, except on a pass ball or a wild pitch and respect the game and respect the opponent. And that's what you're going to get out of John Rittman. Yeah. Both of these coaches really have been doing this a very, a very long time at a high level. And they've been, yeah, very good at it. You're right. That's in the dirt, two and one. Right now it just looks like Carr is just having issues finding the strike zone. Watch, watch right here. Watch Rittman, see? Just telling the base runner there, just, just, just uh, stay over there unless they throw a wild pitch or, or a pass ball or something like that. We, we've got some runs. We're in control of this game. About away, two and two. The rule of thumb in softball is play hard till you get to eight because of the eight run rule. You know, right. if you're up eight runs after five innings, the game is over. And so usually, you know, all, you know, all's fair. Uh, until you get to eight, and then once you get to eight, you kind of slow things down a little bit. And there's some people that don't abide by that. Into the net, two and two. Nice at bat put together here by Hannah Goodwin. They, the, the coach in me is coming out right now because now I'm a little bit concerned about Cable. She's been sitting in that dugout a long time. There, during this, during this uh, inning, and uh, when she gets back out there in the circle, she's going to have to be sure she gets herself warmed up. I'm surprised she hadn't scooted down to the bullpen. She may have scooted down to the bullpen. This ball, base hit to left field. Another run across the plate for Clemson on the RBI single by Hannah Goodwin, and the Tigers are rolling. They're just the teeing second. off on everything they see. The ball in the eyes of the Tiger hitters right now, it looks like a beach ball when it's coming up there, and they're just, just teeing off on it. And now Clemson has officially batted around here in the second. Oh, that was a great shot. Uh, you had both coaches in the same shot, and boy, what a difference. You know, where you're standing or where you're sitting at makes in a ball game. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Coach Ripton sitting out there with a nine-run lead, and Coach Montgomery's just trying to figure out how to get it going. First pitch in the dirt, ball one to Logaleo. She has the only outs in this inning, and that was a ground out to start this frame. That's correct. And I do think Camel is down in the Clemson bullpen tossing a little bit, just trying to keep herself loose and warm.
That grabs the corner, one and one. This game right here is, uh, is something that the, uh, the Clemson Tigers have been waiting on to have a, just a big bust open game to, to uh, get everybody going, get everybody involved, feeling good. And uh, this is a very, very good thing for you if you're a Clemson fan. It's uh, a little bit humbling right now to be in the Maryland dugout, but uh, better days are ahead for the Terrapins as Coach Montgomery establishes his, his program and his culture there. One, two counts on Lugaleo. Freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee, destroys it, but it's she turned foul. on that one. Boy, she was all over that pitch. Another replay. Logalea, very athletic family, related to Troy Palomalu, made the NFL Hall of Fame a couple weeks ago. To yeah. Tongue of Aloha, family yeah. member. How about that? He would hit you. <laughs> Troy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Line drive just fell. She's had a great athletic start to her career. Mm -hmm. She played at Hillsborough High School where she was the team captain for softball, volleyball, and basketball. Teams. How about that? And uh, the city of Nashville in that area up there has got a great history for softball. A lot of good players have come out of the Nashville area. Outside, two and two. So, I think uh, that right now, if you're if you're Coach Ripman, you're just going to tell your hitters to just have disciplined at bats. Don't try to do anything special. Uh, use this as a moment to continue to work on your game. Hits sharply down the left field line. Just found by a foot, maybe. Uh, yeah. Again, she's turning on it. I mean, she is really seeing that pitch. Two Anything. pitches ago, it was down the right field line. This one down the left field line. Yep. And you'll see that ball's going to be about 13 inches foul. Ground ball to the shortstop. Kerr doesn't fire anywhere. So everybody is safe for Clemson. Yeah, boy, when it when it when it starts going when it starts going bad, it goes bad. Kerr had thoughts of getting the runner at third base. The ball was hit deep into the shortstop's hole, but nobody was there covering up at third base as uh, Kufta had kind of made a move toward the ball. And as it turns out, everybody ends up safe. As you said, when it rains, it pours. Oh yeah, Maryland. Yeah, they're, they're you know they're just uh, they're just trying to find a way to get an out. It is ruled a single for Logalea. Now, it, it has to be ruled a single in that area because it was hit so deep into the hole, and you can't, you can't give an error to the third baseman, Kufta, for trying to make a move on the ball off the bat, and she didn't have time to get back to cover third. So uh, an infield single it shall be. Bailey Taylor with a 2-0 counts. She has a walk and a run scored this inning. She's the 10th different batter for Clemson this frame. Yeah, that's uh, that's really all the only stat you got to say about this inning. Six usually, runs on six hits. Usually when 10 people bat in one inning, it's something bad has happened. Depending on which team. <laughs> which team yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm speaking for the pitcher right yeah. now, so. Right now it's Carr in the circle. Yeah, pitching she, in relief. She's pitching in relief, and she she inherited trouble, and uh, and and now she's uh, just trying to weather the storm. But if you're the Tigers, this is exactly what you wanted out of your game today, because they've got to play a late game this afternoon, and right. they, you know to get out here and to to get some work in early and. If they stay steady and they stay strong and they do what they should, they can get out of here in five innings. 
Uh, I'm not trying to jinx them or trying to look too far ahead. But when you're playing multiple games in a day, the name of the game is win as quickly and as efficiently as you can. Clemson will take on Michigan State for the first time this weekend. We're not doing that game, are we? We get the afternoon, late afternoon off. Remember how we touched on all the different games going on yeah. on the campus? Yeah. Busy, <laughs> busy weekend. Yeah. So I'll. Uh, You'll be a fan, though. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, You'll be here for the nightcap. That's fouled. Three and two. With so many things going on, you've only got so many producers and uh, that you can uh, can use. And there's a couple of Michigan State players posing for a photo. Everybody, oh, let me look, let me look. They got to love the weather this <laughs> yeah. weekend. Yeah, if you're from up there, I mean, this is like, you know, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Yeah, I mean. 3-2. We can see grass. <laughs> you know, we we can see grass. No and snow. It, yeah, yeah. And, and it's uh, it's just, this is great weather for, for them. And for guys like you and I, you know, who are natives of the southeast, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, it's a chilly day. But if you're from East Lansing, Michigan, it, it is not a chilly day. <laughs> They all pitch. Taylor, skies one to left field. Long run for McCray. It's a grand slam. Clemson has broken this thing wide open here in the second. 13-0 well, lead. I can tell you right now, she served up a, 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 a cookie, as we call them in our business, and the hitter jumped all over it. It was never a doubt on that pitch. If you watch right here, she stays nice and quiet and bang. And that ball is long gone. Second home run of the day for Clemson. That's the first this season for the junior Bailey Taylor, the eighth of her career. And Maryland will be making Another pitching change. Third different pitcher used this inning alone. Yeah, and that's uh, that's uh, you know uh, a tough situation to be in, and uh, that that's going to be that's going to be Jarecki coming on to pitch, and we'll tell you about her after the break. Clemson in front, 13 to zero. We'll be back right after this. New pitcher, the sophomore out of Lincoln, Nebraska, Amelia Jarecki, the third different pitcher used this inning for Maryland. So she will inherit one out and the bases loaded after the grand slam off the bat of Bailey Taylor, which is the second grand slam for Clemson yeah. this season. And if you're if if you're a pitcher right now in the Maryland uh, dugout you know anytime a coach looks at you you kind of want to look away <laughs> as if you didn't notice that they were uh, about to ask you something because uh, the Clemson hitters have just really really blown this thing sky high I mean it's 13 to nothing and we're in the second inning and there's only one out Carr did not record an out for Maryland. Three hits, four runs, all earned, one walk. She now that, threw 28 pitches. That's a that's a, that's a rough go of it right there. First pitch strike to the number nine batter, JoJo Hyatt. Starting pitcher Trinity Slotelbeck went an inning and a third. She gave up nine earned runs on seven hits. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough way to go. That's in the dirt, one and one. Jericki did pitch this morning against Pitts, and she pitched yesterday against Clemson as well. There you go. So she's gone two and a third total this weekend. Yeah. High two and one. And, and no coach ever imagines you never prepared for a game like this, uh, you know. And right now, you, if you're the Maryland team, you kind of got to shed this game like dead skin as quick as you can. I mean, you you just got to get rid of it. Get it just get, just get it off of your body and off of your soul, and uh, just 
you know, find something. I, I mean, you sit there and you can talk to your ball club in between innings and go, look, okay, it's 13 nothing on the board, but for the next three innings, it's going to be 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's see if we can – Let's see if we can win three innings. I know that may sound like it's uh, condescending or, or, or whatever, but they've got to find something to twist the positive out of. Right. Baby right. steps. Right. So After this game, they're going to have a little bit of time to rest and regroup as they will take on Pitts tomorrow morning. Yeah. 10 a.m. Yeah. Eastern. That's tapped foul. It's the leadoff batter, Cami Pereira, trying to drop a bunt. Yeah, I know. I bet you Coach Ripman didn't tell her to bunt. I think it, yeah. So. Lead off hitter, and she's a slap hitter, so bunting is part of her normal game. That was not a, you know, intended to show up anybody or anything like that. But Coach Ripman probably just said, hey, work on your slap and let's not bunt. Pereira's from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, a Furman transfer, where she was first team all-conference for the Paladins and led the SOCON with six triples. Hammers this one a straightaway center field. Klein watches it hit the bottom portion of the wall. JoJo Hyatt cruises into third. It's a stand-up double for Cami Pereira. And it just keeps going if you're the Tigers. They are hitting everything. Second double of the season for Pereira, the 11th of her career. Now I want you to watch. Something's going to happen here in just a little bit. You're going to see the home plate umpire uh, maybe re relax the strike zone a little bit. I don't know if you will or you won't because the game is pretty well decided now. You kind of, yeah. particularly when Clemson hits, you want to be sure that, that uh, the game keeps moving. So he may open up his zone a little bit. Did you find that to be the case a lot? Oh, yeah. And there were games when I would tell it, you know, particularly if we were, if we really had it going, you know. And you would tell the umpire? I'd say, look, open it up a little bit. Let's get out of here. I'm sure, sure they were all for that. Oh, yeah, they are. They, yeah, man, I don't mean to embarrass the game and make right, a sham right. out of it. But, you know, all ties go their way, you know, on, on, at the plate. And, uh, but I don't, I don't think that uh, right now that uh, Mr. Frills is going to do that. But uh, this would be a good time to just tell the clips and hitters, look, man, get in there and get your hats because I'm gonna if it's near the, just in between the uh, batter's boxes, that's it's gonna be a strike. <laughs> it really, I yeah. Mean, it just happens. It happens in Major League Baseball all the time too. Uh, this is Matamore at the plate. And before people start saying, well, you shouldn't do that, it's I said, uh, uh, well. I'll tell you what right now, it, it is absolutely just frustrating as all can be uh, to be out there on the field right now if you're that Maryland ball club because yeah. you know you're better than this. You know that uh, you're, you're more capable than this. Another walk. And that puts Matamore on and the bases are loaded we'll again. See what's going to happen right now. Now this could be interesting. So Valerie Cagle is scheduled to be at the plate. I'll tell you right now what's going on down there. Right now, that is exactly the conversation you're seeing. He's holding up the lineup card, Coach Montgomery is, to shade it. But he was at, telling the umpire that, hey, they're beating the daylight side of us right now. Why are you, you know, letting all those tight pitches go their way? I, I yeah. assure you that's what the conversation was because you can see the reaction by the umpire. So this brings up Cagle. She's the 15th different hitter this yeah. inning for Clemson. Yeah. She had an RBI single and a run scored earlier. That's like the old joke, you know, um, you know, pitcher come, a manager comes out to take a pitcher out of the game and uh, bases are loaded and they've been shelled, you know, and and the manager says, uh, you know, give me the ball. And the pitcher goes, wait a minute, why are you taking me out? Why am, why am I taking you out? Why do you think I should leave you in? He says, well, you know, that ball is driven right out of this ballpark. Wow. The inning continues. The second grand slam this inning for Clemson. The third this season. 
What a shot off the bats of Valerie Cagle, her team high third homer this year. And they're going to think that Coach Sweeney and the Tigers are playing football because the uh, John Rittman Tigers are up two touchdowns and a field goal on Maryland. 17 to nothing in the second inning with one out. So Not much you have to say about that one. That was hit out of here on just a frozen rope. And now, see what we got going here. Now we got another pitching change. And they're going to be re entering Schlatterbeck. Who started the first inning and a third. Right now, Maryland, they're just searching for answers yeah. in that circle. Yeah. No. No, uh, no reliever got an out. And I think right now we're going to show Coach Rittman on the recruiting trail or, or something about his philosophy on recruiting as Slaughterbeck warms up. With recruiting was a number one priority. You know, how do you build this roster from scratch and try to get the scholarships turned over so you're not replacing 18 players that first year, four years from then. So that that was a challenge. Um, the other thing was was the stadium, you know, and we were very fortunate that uh, our administration was, uh, you know, allowed us to be a part of the process. So between putting in the staff and and uh, you know building the uh, the stadium, it, it took a lot of time. First pitch. This ball was lifted in the gap in left center field. M.K. Bonamy will slide in a second with a double. And it's just been that kind of an inning for Clemson. This is one of the most remarkable innings I have ever seen. I can promise you that John Rittman and the Tigers are not taking any great pleasure in this, but you have to play the game. You have to respect the game. You have to, uh, to do the things that, uh, that should be done. So another double for Bonamy. This is driven in the air to center field. Klein brings it in, and Marissa Gambarda is retired for the second out. Now that's the first out recorded in about 45 minutes. And it was the very first batter this inning, too. Ground out from Logaleo. How about that? And now Hannah Goodwin will step in. The 17 runs, by the way, it is not the most runs that Clemson has scored in a game this season, which is 19 against St. John's in a tournament to start the season in Orlando. But the 14 may be the most they've scored in any one inning. Goodwin rolls one to Kerr, and it is not picked up by the first baseman. And the inning continues for Clemson now with runners on third and first after that error. You'll see the ground ball fielded cleanly, and the throw was in the dirt. And the, fir the first baseman was not able to pick the ball. And we'll have a meeting in the circle here for Maryland. So for Clemson, 14 runs on 11 hits, helped out by two errors this inning. They are about to send the 16th different batter to the plate this frame. And that uh, rather 19. Yeah, I, and that and that that big inning they had against St. John's. I don't recall how many runs they scored, but uh, but this right here has been definitely a an offensive eruption. No doubt. So John Ridman has to be pleased with what he's seen from his lineup at the play today. Everybody that has been in the box has recorded hits. Everybody has scored at least one run. That's the kind of day you want. As Mark Montgomery having a lengthy conversation now with the home plate umpire. And I'm sure he's having a conversation about the strike zone, about the not opening it up. I'm telling you that's what they're talking about. You may yeah. not want to hear that, but I guarantee you that's what they're talking about. We'll see if it changes or has an adjustment. So runners on third and first for Clemson with two outs. And the game just 
goes on and on. The hitter, top of the order, it's Cami Pereira. As John Rittman is having a conversation out with the whole plate umpire. And he is telling, I'm, I'm, I'm telling They're you what's both, going both on. on. Everybody's yeah. on the same page yeah, now. We're trying to get everybody on the same game. See everybody talking, everybody walking around. This might be one of these half innings that Coach Pittman and his players and coaches, they'll remember and talk about for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see what happens here. First pitch is a strike. I think you're so going to hear go. that a lot. Yeah. I think you're going to hear that a lot. And the players are going to go, but I don't want to ruin my average. I said top of the order. Rather, it's not the top of the order. Logo Leo is at the plate. Yeah. One for two with a ground out, ground out in a uh, single. She started the inning off very innocently. And then all of a sudden. Rolls it to third foul. Let off with that ground out to shorts. I bet she didn't think she would have two more plate appearances yeah. this inning. <laughs> Slaughter back with an 0-2 counts. Fires home, and again it's fouled as Coach Ridman with a nice play at third. Yeah. Did you coach third, or were you in the dugout? I did. The whole I did time? coach. I did coach third most of my career. Yeah. What do you like about being at third? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of times back in my day, that Driven ball was hit right. sharply, but out. Brashear brings it in for the third and final out. An uh -huh. inning for the ages for Clemson. 14 runs on 11 hits, highlighted by two grand slams. 17-0 lead, Clemson over Maryland. 17-0, Clemson in front of Maryland. And Scott, this can be the tricky part for Logan Camel, the freshman. She had to sit 48 minutes during that half inning. Yeah, but she, she ran down to the bullpen and, and threw a little bit. But it is going to be an interesting time. This is another learning opportunity uh, for this young Clemson ball club in that let's see how you play with a lead. Let's see, how, let's see what kind of front runner you are. Can you stay sharp? Can you stay, um, you know, mentally strong and all those kind of things? Maryland scheduled to send five, six, and seven to the plate. So, so let me ask you this. In this situation, if you're Camel, uh -huh. can you work on any pitches, like, well, sure, in if, this if scenario? There's, if, there's you you want, if there's pitches you want to work on, if you yeah. want to work on your changeup or – you don't normally throw a screwball and you want to work on that and things like that. Sure, there's lots you can do. But the name of the game, though, is is for all of her eight teammates to play defense as if it was a 0-0 game. And if you're Maryland, what you got to do is, is you, you've just got to dig in. you just got to dig in and try to find something positive. First pitch strike to Taylor Okada leading off. Sophomore from Fullerton, California. Had 26 starts last year and then was injured and missed the rest of the season for the Terrapins. Smacks it foul, strike two. Yeah. And Cable, just, she's got to stay in her tunnel. We used to talk to our pitchers all the time about stay in your tunnel. Don't worry about what the score is. Don't worry about what the situation is around you. You just got to do your thing when you got the ball, because if you don't, you can end up getting hurt. And you don't want to do that, so you got to play the game. Okada, one for one against Clemson yesterday in her only appearance. Lifts one to left field, Logaleo underneath it, brings it in for the first out. I see that Mike Larrabee is taking over, coaching at third base. Thank you. 
What does that do for Martin Montgomery now in the dugout? He's probably sitting in there trying just to figure things out and try to just take a look at, at where they're at right now and uh, what, what can be done next. They've got they're going to have a, a, a really long 18 or 20 hours between now and yeah. when they play again. Which will be 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning against Pitt. Right. Shelby Yonkin at the plate. Yeah. That was Mike Larrabee in the box at third four years as the head coach at Central Washington. And at Arkansas. He was yeah. prior to that. He, so he's coaching the big spotlight. Uh, coach Larrabee also has been part of the USA National Coaching Pool. And he was a men's fast switch player in his own right and a good one. Two and one the count on Yonkin. You're no stranger to Team USA. What is that part of it like representing your country? Oh, well, for me, it was just a thrill being part of that staff and being around people that I admired and respected so much. But to 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 spend time day after day with the, the best players in the world, uh, it was it was just a great learning opportunity for me. I, I, uh, it was an honor to be part of that coaching pool. It was an honor to be a part of those things but uh, the big thrill was, was that, I mean watching literally the best players in the world uh, you know performing day after day and how they went about their business and yeah they were athletic but they also were very professional about how they prepared and how they cared for themselves and and everything and it was just a wonderful experience and traveling the world too oh yeah a lot of traveling <laughs> a lot of traveling and uh, you get very acquainted with airports. What's the longest flight you guys have? Uh, the longest one I was ever on was uh, to Beijing. Wow. And, uh -oh. So we're receiving word now, it was very quietly, that Maryland's head coach has been ejected from this ball game. And that is why we have the change out there. I'm, I am, uh, I did not see it. Well, if I'm guessing, it's whenever Coach Montgomery was in the circle and had that last conversation as that pitch misses for ball four to Shelby Yonkin, so ah. base runner. Ah, when he, he went out to for a third defensive visit without making a change. That's where he was when the Tigers found him. He was there from 2015 to 2017 when he was named the head coach of Clemson on November 3rd, 2017. Okay. 3-1, that misses for ball four. And right, let's, see what, let's see if we can see what happened with the, uh, the Maryland head coach. Okay. Yeah, they're having a talk out there. Yeah, so this was after the third pitching change for Maryland last inning. Yeah. And there it was. That's Phil Reels, the home plate umpire. And that nightmare inning for Maryland. Yeah. And I, I don't think that was a I don't think that was a, like a heated exchange ejection. I think it was more procedural. Uh, if yeah. it had been a heated moment, I think we'd have seen a lot more activity. Right. But there's Mike Larrabee right now. He's trying to hold things together, and they've created a little bit of a mess right now as the Tigers, as they've uh, kind of came out a little bit uh, uh not as sharp as they have been. Brashear flares one where it's brought in by the shortstop hand and Goodwin with a nice play. Yep, Goodwin did a nice easy. job. She took a drop step, ran it down like a like an outfielder. Each team is allowed seven conferences. Uh, one conference per half inning, unless coach makes a pick and pitch and change. And pitcher is not thrown a pitch in that inning. So okay. So now we got it. 
JoJo McCray in the number nine batter. Well, he's off the first pitch, and it's called a strike. So two outs, two runners on base for Maryland. McCray's a junior out of Lucas, Texas. Only Texan on this roster for Maryland. Yeah. I wish I could tell you a little bit more about what's going on in the head of of uh, Camel because uh, you know as a pitcher pitching with a 17 run lead. But uh, though I did pitch, I never had a 17 run lead. <laughs> I got to come in sometimes yeah. when we were 12 down, <laughs> but I didn't. I never was on this side of the good fortune. Do you remember the biggest lead that you did have at one point? One. <laughs> Hey, more than the other team. <laughs> yeah. oh, Swing no, and I, a miss. I, uh, I really don't recall, but I know it was at 17. Logan Camel picks up her second strikeout of the afternoon, and after two, Clemson leading 17-0. Welcome back to Clemson, top of the third. Tigers lead the Maryland Terrapins 17-0. First pitch to Bailey Taylor is in the dirt ball one. Yeah, the, the Clemson hitters, they have, have just got to go about their business. Just take good swings at good pitches. Don't waste anything. Time's been called now by the catcher. A lot of folks don't uh, see this often because they are thinking baseball, but what you have is you've got the game's starting pitcher throwing in relief. Uh, Slaughterbeck started this game, was relieved, and uh, about 40 minutes after she was relieved, went back in the game to, rec to record the final two outs. And then she recorded all three outs of the uh, last inning, but there was uh, about a 40-minute span in between. Very, very unique situation yeah. here. That's what I was about to say. Very unique. And, uh, but the crowd is staying with the game, and they're staying right here enjoying it. They're, uh, they've got to be impressed with the fan base that is, that is established uh, for, for Clemson softball. I mean, this team is two weeks old. Yeah. Two weeks and old. A lot of teams don't have this support. Yeah, two weeks old, and they've got a sold-out crowd here on a Saturday. And uh, this is just wonderful. That's high for ball four on Bailey Taylor. So second, brother, that's the first time today for Clemson where the leadoff batter is yep. reached. JoJo Hyatt, the number nine batter, will step in. Say so getting. They're getting her running mitten. I've seen these in, in, in the major leagues now. There is a glove that a base runner runs on, runs with in their hand where they don't get their hand stepped on or spiked. And yeah, essentially looks like an oven mitt. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps uh, the runner's afraid that she's gonna injure that hand. Were those around when you were coaching? No. <laughs> Gloves had just been invented when I started coaching. <laughs> no. Nah. So. The 01 foul back. No, it, technology has really been a big part of the game the last 30 years. Uh, what do you think has been the biggest? The bats. The bats, really? The bats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, you know, 30, 35 years ago, it, it was tough to generate a lot with the bats. But uh, some, when the bats started to evolve and it put offense in the game, and I really believe that is what has caused this tremendous surge in popularity of the sport because softball games in the 60s and the 70s were always usually one nothing, 2 nothing, and sometimes they would be 17 or 18 innings. As you see, Hyatt reach on an error there by the third baseman. Uh, she kind of handcuffed herself out there with it. That's cuffed uh, another error on Maryland. That's the fourth this afternoon. Yeah. And uh, 
So top of the order, nobody out, two on for Cami Pereira. Yeah. What about film? Uh, well, I mean, analytics and all of the studying of the game has definitely uh, had an impact as we see a single right here score a run. And uh, Bailey Taylor crosses the plate, didn't even get to use her oven mitt glove. Uh, that's got to be kind of disappointing. You take all the time to put the glove on. You don't even get the slide, you know. But uh, but video, uh, the, the, the coaches have evolved. Uh, but uh, the biggest change in this game is offense appeared as the bats um, were kind of evolved and became uh, livelier. RBI single for Cami Pereira. How about the day for Pereira? Three oh. for four in that leadoff spot. Yeah, and that's what you want, I mean, out of a leadoff hitter, that's the name of the game. Ariella Oda is now at the plate, freshman out of Buford, Georgia. You touched on it earlier. One of three players on this Clemson roster out of Buford High School in Georgia. Yeah. Played for Coach Tony Wolf there at Buford High School and back in 1984 was a college teammate of yours truly. How did you guys do? Uh, the team itself it was uh, not as good as it maybe could have been, but Coach, uh, Coach Wolf was a fantastic pitcher. He was the, he was the number one starter on that, uh, on that team. I was on the pitching staff. Uh, they, we had about 11 pitchers on the staff, and I think I was the uh, number 14 <laughs> pitcher on that staff, I think. Uh, if the managers didn't want to go out and throw, they'd send me in. Uh, but it was a great experience, and Tony Wolf has gone on to be just an outstanding high school coach in Georgia. Won a 5A state championship. Yeah. And uh, the, Buford, the, the Buford players come from a culture of winning. They come from a culture of success. And uh, Did you look for that when you were recruiting players? You, you better wanted, believe it. You want players that came from? I, I, want a player that, I want a player that knows how to win. Now, you can find kids on under 500 teams that know how to win. That's not what I'm, I'm saying. But you, you want to find people that uh, – that, uh, Care themselves, walk, talk, look like, play like a winner, and they and, and then they go out and they show it. Of course, that goes without saying. Uh, but uh, you better believe you look for that. That was the second strikeout this afternoon for Trinity Slaughterbeck. Cagle, yeah. last time she was up, hit a grand slam last inning, one of two grand slams yeah. in that monster 14-run yeah. inning for Clemson. She yanked that ball right out of here. That was the first one. Yep. Yeah. Bailey Taylor had the other one just five bats later. Kago with a 1-1 count. She's off to a really good start to her freshman season. Yeah. Might even see her pitch tonight. She was good yesterday in the circle. She got better each inning yesterday, I'll tell you that. I was very impressed with that. Had a complete game victory in seven innings and had eight strikeouts. And was on the ropes at the first inning of that game by this very same Maryland team. Yeah. Uh, the bases were loaded. Uh, it was a... Uh, I think a double play helped shorten the inning for her, and uh, did a. But she got better as the game went on. That's high, two and two. The game, the game has to be played a certain way, all the time. If you're in the lineup, you're in the game, and that's what we used to tell them. That ball's lifted out to the left. Another it's up in that ball. wind. McCray and leaps. And it got out of here. Wow. Another home run for Valerie Cagle. That's her fourth one this season and her second today. I 
I honestly do not know what to say to this, Graham. This is a, uh, an offensive display. There's 21 runs up on the board right now. How about the day for Cagle, though? That is eight RBIs. Yeah. And you got, you're going to see Coach Rittman now start emptying his bench, I believe. We've got a pitch hitter coming in the game right now. It looks like uh, Keller has grabbed a bat, and she's going to hit. So the 21 runs program record for Clemson the previous was 19 against St. John's last weekend. Yeah. And who knows, this one might last longer than a weekend. Uh, this one right here, I, you know, when this game started, neither one of us needed to shave. <laughs> yeah. And as you see, the pinch hitter, Keller, from Hollywood, Alabama. Another one of the freshmen on the roster for Clemson. Day two of the ACC Big Ten softball challenge. Yesterday was a good day for the Big Ten. They went seven and four in this challenge yesterday. Is that right? They won it last year. They went 23 and 13 against the ACC right. a season ago. Well, both conferences put a lot of teams in the national tournament at the end of the year. We'll have another visit in the circle. I know exactly what he's telling her. <laughs> we don't have another option. You know, uh, I guess they have not used. Uh, they, they have not used yesterday's starter yet uh, in this game. But she That's did Courtney appear. That's Courtney White. Yeah, she did appear, though, in the first game earlier today. She may not be available. But uh, yeah, White yesterday three and a third against Clemson, and then today against Pitt, she finished the game and went two and a third. Yeah, but I think he might have went out there and told Schlotterbeck, "Come on, kiddo, we need you because it's going to be you." It's now a three-zero count. This is the first plate appearance this season for Keller. It's got to be a thrill for her. And she earns herself a four-pitch walk. Wow. And now we're going to see another pinch hitter make her way to the plate. It's going to be Madison May. As John Rittman is literally emptying his bench. May, a freshman out of Valdosta, Georgia. High school single season record for home runs in a season with 14. How about that? Valdosta's down there in Lowndes County on the state line, right there where Georgia and Florida meet on I-75. That's where she went to high school, Lowndes High School. They've had a very good softball program there for the last decade. 1-0 of the counts. So Clemson, three runs in the first, and then the 14 runs last inning. is a very unique town in the fact their, their city bird is a gnat. <laughs> Do you know how that came to be? Yeah. If you've ever been to Valdosta in the summertime, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's hot. It is hot and the, and it is below. And the state of Georgia has a very defined gnat line uh, that runs right right across the uh, center of the state. And if you're south of that line, yeah, in the in the summertime, you deal with with gnats. What's the what's the minor league baseball team in Savannah? The sand gnats. The sand gnats, and those are and those are even more uh, bitter than the regular gnat because the sand gnat bites you. Swing and a miss, and looks like she hit her shoulder. Madison May on the follow. Yeah, she hurt herself on the swing. 
Hopefully she'll be okay. That's three strikeouts for Trinity Schlotterbeck. Back in 1984, I was sitting in a, excuse me, 1982, I was sitting in an old Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, and I saw Braves outfielder Terry Harper dislocate his shoulder waving a, a player in on a pass ball. And right there we saw a player, you know, hurt her shoulder on her swing. I don't know if that if the bat hit her on the did follow it? through if she just pulled something. I thought it like it pulls up, but I, I could be way wrong. I did not see or hear her hit herself with the bat. Two outs and a runner on first. This is Hannon Goodwin. Reached twice today. Hammers one up the middle. Diving effort. What a play. Okada. Wow. Shifted it over to Regan Kerr for the third and final out. So for Clemson, four runs on two hits. There was an error. 21-0. Clemson in front. Going back to that final out, Taylor Okada. What a play by the second baseman. Walk yeah, you want, you want to see a player playing hard. Okada right there. Her team down 21 runs, and yet she managed to make one of the best plays you'll ever see in knocking that, knocking that ball down, never really fully controlling it, but swatting that ball to Kerr for the force out at second base. That right there is a huge compliment to the competitive nature of that young woman. So top of the order for Maryland and a new batter. It's Sammy Stephan, a junior from LaGrange, Ohio. Second team Big 12 last year when she led Maryland in home runs and doubles. Takes a strike, one and two. And to see what Stefan's done on the year. She uh, got off to a little bit of a slow start, one for 13. She did not play this morning against Pitt. No. But she did play yesterday against Clemson. Mm -hmm. Went 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Yeah. And, and this has got to be just agonizing for Coach Rittman and Coach Jameson, you, you want Cable just to pump strikes in there. Just just pump strikes. And uh, hey, you don't want full counts. No. Just uh, just get it going and just pump them in there. This is again a, a, another learning experience for a young ball club. Popped up right side and off the top of the dugout of Clemson. And I can promise you right now that both teams, both teams realize the situation. They're going to be respectful of the game. They're going to continue to play hard, but they, they would love to have this game over with as soon as possible. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Camel. That's her third. Yep. Yep. A little bit of a late breaking pitch. Nice job. See Camel out there. She's got her. She's got her game day face on. Klein jumps on the first pitch. Skies on a shallow right field where it's brought in by Oda for the second out. I notice Camel's got her. Got her, got her paint, you see there on the mound. Graham, you think I could have been a better pitcher if I'd have painted my face? <laughs> Would you go I, with I the sparkles thought, I like never that? thought about that. I never thought, if it had made me pitch better, you better believe I'd have wore them. But uh, that's, that's interesting right there. You don't really see pitchers in baseball, even with the eye black, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> First pitch is in the dirt. No, you sure don't. But that right there, see, that's not only a, only uh, there maybe to help the eyes a little bit, but that's a statement right there. Look at that. Look at that. There was some work involved in that. No doubt. 
Ground ball to third, nice scoop up by Taylor. Slings it across in time for the third and final out. So for the first time today, Maryland goes down quietly. One, two, three to close the bottom of the third. 21-0, Clemson leads Maryland. Top of the fourth, Clemson leads Maryland 21-0. Yep. And due up for the Tigers, it's scheduled the bottom third of the order, 7, 8, and 9, as the freshman Trinity Slaughterbeck continues to pitch in the circle for Maryland. Starting to find her rhythm somewhat as she retired. After she surrendered the home run to Cagle, was able to pick up a strikeout and a yep. ground out. Yep. So both teams starting to shake things up defensively and with their lineups, bringing in new players. And one thing Maryland has done this inning, Stefan is now playing first defensively. Ligori is now the new shortstop for Maryland with Kufta shifted to third. Look at that, they hit it right to her. You call out her name and she gets a put out. It's the way it works, isn't it? I do, you do it. Yeah, checks in defensively and the ball's like a magnet, finds the new player out in the field. That is, uh, that's why you're sitting in the lead seat, Captain. <laughs> so one out, base is empty for Bailey Taylor. Taylor, big day for her, one for one with a grand slam. She has two walks as well. Yep. I tell you what, she and uh, Cagle and a couple of others, I mean, they've had good weeks this afternoon. Yeah, batting average will be up there for sure. This There's ball's ripped one. to left field. So Bailey Taylor reaches for the fourth time today. Yep. And the hits just keep coming. Looks like we got a pinch hitter right here. Number 13's coming up. That's Abby Stewart. Stewart, a freshman out of Snow Camp, North Carolina. As you get a look at that one out single for Bailey Taylor. So Clemson today. 17 hits and 21 runs to go with it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good day. That's a good day. She sees Stewart's new catcher as well for Maryland. Katie Dustin, a freshman, a native of Maryland, missed last year due to an injury, so she is, is now in the game defensively behind the plate catching for the Terrapins. A lot of new faces defensively for Maryland, and that's got to be a that's got to be a, a you know a, a, an opportunity is a, is a thrill for a player to get out there in the game. Uh, you know these guys that that are subs they they you know they live for these moments, and I think we got a pinch runner out at first base now. Freshman uh, Carly Shannon. Carly Shannon going to get some road work in. Was in a similar situation yesterday. She did have a stolen base yesterday. And she's got her uh, she's got her base running of him mid on. Stewart's batting in the number nine spot. She takes a strike. It's 0-2. He's in there hitting hitting for Hyatt. I would imagine Hyatt would re-enter the game to catch. You don't no normally break up your battery in the middle of the game, especially when there's a shutout going. Runner breaks to second and gets there easily. Probably go, might go as a pass ball. There's that, there, there's that running mitt we were talking about and kidding about. It protects the fingers. You'll see the ball right here. That might, that, I'd call that a pass ball. It is ruled a pass ball. Soft ground ball to short. Ligori fires it over in time to retire. Stewart moving to third on the ground out at Shannon. So top of the order, two outs. Runner on third, here's Cami Pereira. So Clemson, they've scored at least 
three runs in every inning. Yeah. They have, uh, not doing that here. They, they're, uh, they have really been proficient. Pereira 0 for 4 against Maryland yesterday. She has three hits against the Terrapins today. With a 1-1 count. I'll tell you what, a three for four day out of your leadoff hitter, that, that, that makes a coach feel good. Tough to beat, isn't it? It sure is. Turns on it, rolls it foul, strike two. Yeah. So Clemson, they will have another game today. They will take on the Pitt Panthers. But Clemson's going to, I think, take on uh, Michigan State. Oh, yeah, that's right, Michigan State. Yeah. As this ball is picked up in foul territory by the new catcher, Justin. Uh, Pitt will play Maryland tomorrow morning. Yes. Uh, Maryland, uh, Michigan State and Pitt are going to play right after this game. And then in the nightcap, you're going to have Michigan State and Clemson face each other. It's a Michigan State team that's been led by their head coach a long time. That's called strike three. Yep. Fourth strikeout for Schlotterbeck. So Clemson for the first time today does not scratch a run across the plate, but they lead 21-0 head, heading to the bottom of the fourth. Days like today are the reason that we have facilities just like this, so our student athletes can have the best of the best here at Clemson University. Thank you all for being here for this very special uh, celebration. Dan, I still remember the day when you approached me about, uh, about this idea. Dan came to me, he said, I have an idea I want to share with you. I want to start a softball program right here at Clemson. Today's a very special day for our program. We had the ribbon cutting ceremony here in our beautiful Tom Hash practice facility. Hi, Dan Radakovich, Director of Athletics. What a great day at Clemson. We've cut the ribbon on our new softball facility uh, that's been in the works for a number of years. One question we are often asked is, what does it mean to be the first softball team at Clemson? Our answer is simple. It's an indescribable feeling that wouldn't be possible without every person here today. We as Team One have been granted the opportunity to set the standard, to develop the culture, and to lay the foundation for the rest of time. What a great addition to the campus. What a great addition to our athletics programs. And I invite the community to come out and be a part of this. Cheer on our student athletes. First game is only in a couple weeks. Go Tigers. That's awesome. And the community has certainly done their part so far. Sellouts, the first handful of home games to begin the season. Got to witness history with the first no-hitter against Western Carolina as this ball is driven to center field, brought in by Cagle. So one pitch and one out retires Taylor Liguori. Now that's the kind of outs you like right there. One pitch, one out. Taylor Okada steps in, and you're looking at the new pitcher for Clemson. It's the freshman, Emma Whitfield. And Whitfield has worked four innings so far on the young season. Got three strikeouts to three walks, surrendered five runs on five hits. Okada stepping in there. I'll uh, I'll, I'll always remember that that fine play she made. Now nah, and she gets her a base knock. How about that? She's played well today. That's the second hit for Maryland. Both have been singles. And uh, you see, she didn't do anything fancy. She just drove it right back up the middle. And there you go. That's call hitting. The one out runner on first for Taylor Wilson. Her first plate appearance today. Junior from Clinton, Maryland. 1 0 for 2 against the Tigers yesterday. So Camel, her line for the time being, three innings, 
only gave up one hit, had three strikeouts and two walks. Yeah, she she uh, was not as smooth as she was on Wednesday, but to her defense, it was a very difficult situation. Uh, nobody anticipated her having a a 48 minute inning in between going to the yeah. mound. And uh, but she she managed it. She got through it. And that's another step forward in her maturation. Camel threw 53 total pitches and 30 of those went for strikes. Yeah. Wilson drives one to left field past the diving shortstop good one. So Maryland with a pair of one-out singles here in the fourth. The rookie Whitfield out there on the mound right now is from over in Stevens County High School in Tacoa, Georgia, which is, uh, I don't know, probably about 35, 40 miles from here. And uh, this is an opportunity for her to get out here and get some work in, advertise for a little bit more you know, time on the mound. First yeah. plate appearance for Kate Dustin. So Whitfield, she did enroll at Clemson a season ago. Uh-huh. One of seven players that Coach Rittman had come in early as that's sent out of play, 0-2. Oh mm -hmm. Put up eye-popping high school numbers. Yes, she did. Over 800 strikeouts in her high school career. 66 wins in the circle. And in high school, she literally threw the ball by people uh, day in and day out. And now that she's made this step up uh, to the, uh, the top division of college at softball she's going to have to learn to be sure she's really really consistent by hitting her spots trusting her pitches spinning the ball more because uh these division one hitters they can they can drive a ball that's being thrown hard that doesn't move runs a little bit too far inside one and two on dustin Lifted foul. Wow. Still a good number of people hanging around, even though this game has been determined. You got to love it. Baseball still going on. Basketball is about to start at Clemson. We take on Louisville this afternoon. Oh, that's a, Louisville's a top 10 team, aren't they? Lifted in the air, the one-two. Who wants it? It'll be the left fielder. Logaleo brings it in for the second outs. But yes, Louisville's been ranked consistently all season. I'm being told by our crack producer, Mr. Sanders Sullivan, that they're ranked number five in the country right now. Part of the big weekend at Clemson. Oh. Tell you, there's been a lot of cars over there at that track meet. People must really like to watch running up here. <laughs> I mean, I, I you said I, your team hotel, USC. Uh, yeah, USC. Yeah, saying, I mean, California is in the house. You know, you know there's, there's surprisingly, there's only like three or four indoor facilities in the southeast. So, you know, Clemson having one of those, I, I, I can see where they would draw uh, a large number of teams for meets and events. That's in the dirt. Nice. Stopped by the catcher at Stewart. Stewart stayed in. They changed batteries. When they when they removed Camel, they uh, they took an opportunity to give Hyatt some rest. That was a good high high pitch right there, up in the zone. And she's in a position now where she can get out of this mess. You watch right here, nice and firm. Rise ball just jumps over the bat. Wow. 
Tried to get her to chase it again. Evens the count at two and two. If you're Clemson, you gotta, you know, you gotta obviously feel good about winning. Is swung on and missed her first strikeout strike out today, the fourth of her young career, and after four, Clemson in front, twenty-one to zero. Top of the fifth at Clemson, where the Tigers lead the Terrapins twenty-one to zero. And for Clemson, it'll be two, three, and four. Oda steps in. She swings at the first pitch where it's bobbled and dropped by the shortstop, Ligori, who shifted over from first to short last inning. So Clemson reaches to begin the fifth. It's just been one of those days for Maryland. Ball hit right at the shortstop, and she doesn't field it cleanly, and Clemson has a leadoff runner on. That's five errors now on Maryland. Ugh. This ball is bashed deep to left field. McCray watches it bounce off the wall. That's a loud single off the bat of Hannah Goodwin. Whether that's Cagle. Cagle with a single. Her fourth hit today. Hey, what? She's getting rich during this game. I mean, when I say that, I just mean her, her batting average is going through the roof. She was awfully close to picking up her 10th RBI. Yeah. yeah. First pitch is in the dirt to Keller. She has eight RBIs on the day. She had four coming into the day, so she now has 12 RBIs. So. Which leads Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when you pick them up, you know, eight every afternoon, that's a, you know, you're going to kind of move. 2 0, big swing and a miss from Keller, 2 and 1. So the Clemson baseball team started. About the same time, and they just wrapped up with a 1-0 victory over Liberty, so they take the series, winning the first two games. College baseball season starts around the country this weekend, as that's in the dirt, 3-1. and one. you got to love this time of year if you like the bat and ball sports. And we've seen here today that this part of the – this part of the world does love their bat and ball sports. As good crowds were assembled at both ballparks for these games. The players really appreciate it when you come out to watch them. 3-1, full count. Pitchers and catchers reported what, last week for spring yep. training. Yep. That time of year. Sure is. Keller 0 for 1 with a walk today. Will bounce one to third. Kufta fires it over in time to pick up the first out. Just to look at the offense today for Clemson, the big inning was the second when they were able to score 14 runs, including two grand slams in one inning. Here's one of them over the left field wall. That was Hannah Goodwin. Just everything has clicked today for Clemson offensively. It sure has. Popped up, out of play. Strike one. This is Marissa Gambarda. She has one of the three home runs for Clemson. Berman transfers off to a good start in her debut season. Yep. Playing for the Tigers. Had a brief pause in the action. I believe that Coach Ripman had failed to officially re-enter. Gumbarda. 
or someone because he I saw him go to his lineup card. Yeah, there's been a lot of changes. Oh, yeah, it's been like a hockey game. People coming in and out. I mean, we had one pitcher come in and out of the same inning. So come boredom, one of the few firm in faces on this Clemson team. Led the league in home runs last year as Clemson associate head coach Kyle Jamison at his first season at Clemson was previously the head coach at Furman. Yeah. I, uh, in my final season on the field, I worked against Coach Jamison while he was at Furman back in 2013. Coach Jamison mainly works with the pitching staff yep. for Clemson. Batter gets jammed, Gamborda will ground out to the second baseman, Okada, for the third and final outs. So Clemson goes down quietly in the fifth. Maryland down to their final three outs when we return. Bottom of the fifth, pretty day at the ballpark. These Clemson fans seeing their Tigers play at a high level today. 21-0 over Maryland. One of the biggest fans in this ACC Big Ten Challenge for Clemson. How about Dabo Sweeney in the house, sitting right behind home plates, high five and all the players. Giving everybody a high five. He was out here yesterday and, and enjoying his peanuts and stuff and having a great time. See him there and he's giving Coach Ripman a hug and some advice. Fun time to be at the ballpark. I think everybody's been all smiles this weekend as they should be. Well, they're happy to have softball here, and what makes it even better is when you're winning. So. JoJo McCray swings at the first pitch and will fly out to Logaleo to begin the fifth. And unless something dramatically happens and we end up with a one-out 14-run inning by the Terrapins, this game will conclude. And the Pitt Panthers and the Michigan State Spartans will get ready to play in the third game of today's action from here in Clemson. And then in the nightcap, you'll have Clemson and Michigan State facing one another. So there's a lot of softball still left to be played today. As Clemson is on their way to going above 500, as they will play in the nightcap tonight, that's foul back. Maryland still searching for their first win this weekend. They will fall to one and six. Want to thank our camera people and our production team for making this uh, a great afternoon. No they work. They work really hard. And what? has been a chilly Saturday afternoon as well. I didn't even see our guy out there in center field. He had his camouflage jacket on. He's up He's up there kind of hiding from us. He gave us a wave though. I tell you, when they designed this ballpark, they didn't leave anything out. They've got great locations for their cameras. They got great lines of vision for their fans. This is just a beautiful place. That's high for ball four. So Stefan reaches with one out. In a conference that cares about softball as well. Yes. Yeah. This is a this this is a um, a good example of what it takes to be competitive in today's uh, Power Five arena. Check swing by Klein. She will pop out to the shortstop. Good one for the second out. So now Maryland down to their final out. And again, the, the theme so far for Maryland this season, it's been a struggle offensively. They were only averaging two runs on four hits coming into this tournament. And so far today, only three hits, all have been singles. Right, right. They've got work to do, there's no doubt about it. But they've got a brand new coaching staff in there. I think everybody in college parts needs to be patient with this program as we uh, 
have encouraged the, the Clemson fans to do. Don't get too high about this, these big numbers. And don't get too low over, you know, dropping a game here and there. They're, the best days are ahead for both of these programs. Two-zero, driven down the left field line. This ball is fair. This could be an extra base hit. Hustling to third and getting waved home and scoring easily. So the Terrapins pick up their first run of the game on an RBI double off the bat of Anna Kufta. A two-out double, and this ball was hit very sharply. He got out there to the left left field wall. Center left field had a little bit of trouble of gathering it up and allowed the base runner to score from first base. Second double of the season for Kufta. Ligori takes the first pitch high. And if you're Whitfield, you want to bear down and, and get, get your team indoors in the locker room right now. This is a, a big moment for her. She's got to be aggravated by giving up that double, but she's got work to do. Maryland, they are going to be playing on the road a lot for the foreseeable future. They don't have a home game until April the 3rd against Indiana. They will stay south after this tournament. Next weekend, they'll play in a tournament in Statesboro, Georgia, the Eagle Round Robin at Georgia Southern. That'll, that'll be uh, a little bit, little bit more competitive tournament, I think, for them, for the Terrapins. Furman, Monmouth, Evansville, Georgia Southern. Uh, no disrespect to anyone, but the Terrapin team needs to find, they, they played a very, very, very tough tournament to start the season. Then they came in here and caught Clemson red hot. And Pitt's been swinging the bat well. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, the Terrapins are looking for a, a place they can breathe a little bit. This ball just foul. I'll tell you, they're taking their swings off of Whitfield. This is what we were talking about in the last inning. She throws it plenty hard enough, but if that ball doesn't move a lot, these Division One hitters can tee off on it. Ligori 0 for 2. Couple fly outs trying to extend this inning for Maryland. Full count. Yeah, this is not what you want. But nobody's got to tell Whitfield that. She knows it. She'll get herself settled in here. She's learning. 3-2. This ball hit high, deep, left field. Left fielder Loga Leo jumps and can't come up with it. So back-to-back -back RBI doubles for Maryland here in the fifth. This was a towering fly ball to left field. It got caught up in the wind. It just kept blowing, and I think Loga Leo thought that thing was not going to have that carry, but the, there's a wind blowing up there, and that, that got deep on it. So first double for Ligori. First pitch to the new batter, Okada, off the mark. Yeah, and Okada's had a, had a nice day. So Maryland now up to five hits. They had three coming into this inning. All right, they're uh, the two doubles are uh, or helpful, it's taking a little bit of, maybe a little bit of the sting out of, of everything. You got the Tigers with 21 runs on 18 hits, committing one error, and then you've got the Terrapins, two runs on five hits and five errors. And those five errors seemingly just hurt them every time it happened. Yeah, especially that big second inning, which allowed that inning to continue, and then Clemson hit two grand slams yep. after that. Yep. It's upstairs, three and one. The 
Freshman Whitfield trying to close strong. She delivers her 3-1. Line in a left, this should do it. Brought in by Logaleo for the third and final out. So Clemson wins 21-2. They remain undefeated this weekend. The Tigers are now above 500. Biggest takeaway today is what, Scott? Uh the batting order, the the eruption with the bats. Uh, it was good to see Clemson swing the bat, and uh, they cruised to an easy victory. Led by the 14 runs in the second inning, Clemson knocks off Maryland 21-2. to For Scott Whitlock, I'm Graham Doty. For the rest of our fantastic crew, thanks for watching on ACC Network Extra.